So is the thought of measuring EC and pH in your hydroponic plants leaving you feeling somewhat lost and overwhelmed? So don't worry, you're not alone. Many hydroponic gardeners, including myself at one time, tend to shy away from doing these crucial steps. So in this video, I'm going to demystify the process and take away those fears of measuring those vital levels when you watch me get my baby cucumbers and my tomatoes set up in their hydroponic solutions. So let's turn that confusion into clarity so that our hydroponic plants can thrive like never before. So welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So we are at the middle of October now and the little garden has moved indoors down into my basement. So if this is the first time you've joined me, I am a year-round gardener living on the prairies in Saskatchewan, Canada. So today I'm getting a couple of my hydroponic plants ready to set up in their solution here. I have mixed up the nutrients already. So today we are going to be planting up a couple of cucumbers here in hydroponic solution. I'm using the crack key method, which means I have no pumps going in here. It's just nutrient water in the container. I also have a tomato plant here. This is a Manitoba. It is a bush variety tomato. And I also have a sun gold cherry here plant that I brought out of the grow tent just to show you up close because it's a little hard to film inside the grow tent but this I started from seed um, about a month six weeks ago I have set it up in the cracky hydroponics in the nutrient solution as you can see it is growing like crazy and just at that blooming stage so before we get started I'd also ask that you subscribe to my little garden newsletter I will have the link in the description box below so as a subscriber to my newsletter, you get the first notification whenever I have a new video up on the channel. Plus, I share all sorts of information there as well on how you can grow food all year round. So I also want to let you know that I'm in the final stages of creating my first online course, and it's all about hydroponics for beginners. It's a step-by-step -step course that will get you through start to finish on how to grow your first touch of lettuces using the Kraki hydroponic method. So if you want to get in on the introductory price for my online course coming soon, please subscribe to my newsletter and let me know in the comments that you have subscribed and I will keep your name, let you know when the course is ready for sale. So I have mixed up my nutrients using a three-part solution. I use the Flora series from General Hydroponics, which works great. Because these cucumbers are at the early stages, I mix up my nutrient solution at the general purpose, mild vegetative stage. So I'll put the chart up on the screen there so you can see the measurements that I used. So this should be a good starter solution for our cucumbers. So I've got my containers filled up with the nutrient water here. So we now need to test the EC. So EC stands for electrical conductivity. And just saying that word is hard, let alone trying to understand what it all means and why it's important in our solutions here. So I just try to keep it very basic and just explain that EC is the measurement of the salts or the nutrients in your water. So all we want to do is make sure that the EC in our nutrient water is at the right level for the types of vegetables and herbs or lettuces that we are growing so that they are going to get the right amount of nutrients to be able to thrive. So EC readings on one of these TDS meters are usually a four digit number that's measured in micro siemens per centimeter. But when you go searching on the internet to find out the optimal EC levels for your plants in these hydroponic methods, you usually see them in a two digit number, which is the same thing. It's just measured in millisiemens per centimeter. So if you do some Googling to find what the optimal EC level is for cucumbers in hydroponics, you will find that you arrange around 1.7 to 2.5 millisiemens per centimeter is where you want your EC levels to read out at. So on this TDS meter, you can either do it in PPMs or ECs. I just stick with an EC reading. So you switch the mode 
to EC. As soon as you put it in the water, you should get an instant reading and you can just press that hold button. Our EC reading is coming out at 1710. So that will equate to 1.7 millisiemens per centimeter. So it's right in the range of where we want it to be. It's right at the lower end of it, which is okay. I find that when you are just starting your seedlings like this, that, you know, a lower EC is probably the best. So those, as this is the first time these plants are going to start eating up those nutrients, you don't want it to be too strong and to shock those plants. So if you are happy with the EC level of your nutrient water, the next thing you want to do is take a pH reading. So pH stands for potential of hydrogen and it measures the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution on a scale from 0 to 14. So I'll put the chart up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about here. As you'll see, the pH of 7 is neutral, which means it's neither acidic nor alkaline. And for hydroponics, the range that most plants like to fall into is between 5.5 and 6.5. So why is pH important in hydroponics? It's crucial because plants can only absorb nutrients effectively when the pH falls into that range of 5.5 to 6.5. So if that pH doesn't fall into that 5.5, the 6.5 range, then your plants may struggle to take up those essential nutrients that they need, leading to poor growth, nutrient deficiencies, and even plant death. So let's take a pH reading. So I thought I'll just bring you around to this side so it's a little easier to see up close. I have found that when I do pH readings in my water here that it usually comes out a little bit high. So the reading on a pH meter takes about 30 seconds or so before it stabilizes and you get a true reading. And what I have found with my water, it usually comes out a little bit high in that 7.4, 7.5 range. So I usually have to adjust my pH. So my pH is stabilized somewhere around that 7.1 area. So that means it's a little bit high because we want our range to fall in between 5.5 and 6.5. So we are going to need to adjust the pH. So this is what you can use to adjust the pH in your hydroponics if needed. This usually comes as a kit where you get the pH down and the pH up. If you know that you have water that's always going to be high, you could simply purchase one or the other as needed. But lots of times they come together in a kit like this. So we're going to be using the pH down here to see if we can bring down our pH level. And I usually start in a container of this size with about 5 mils of the pH down. Put a few drops in here. And just give it a good stir and just let it sit for a few minutes and then you're ready to take another pH reading. So oh, let's see if that pH has come down a little bit. So it's looking like my pH is coming out at just at that 6.5, so right at the top of that range that we want it to be. So I think I'm just going to add just a couple more drops of the pH down just to kind of get that pH down just a little bit more. That should do the trick for sure. So just by adding a couple more drops of that pH down, I can see the, the level is going down closer to 6.1, 6.0, which is a good pH range for this. So I think I'm happy with that. So I've just mixed up some nutrients for this tomato plant that I want to get going. As you can see, it's got super long roots here, ready to start drinking up some nutrient water. This is a Manitoba variety, so it is going to be like a bushy type uh, tomato, which will be good for growing indoors. It won't get too big. So we're just going to do an EC reading to see what it comes out at. 
Tomatoes seem to like a little bit higher EC according to what you'll find on the internet somewhere around the 2.0 to 4.0 range. So let's see what our EC comes out at here. So as you can see here, it's coming out a little bit low at 1386 or 1.4 if you want to round it up to the two digit number. So it's a little bit lower than what tomatoes prefer. So what do you do when your EC level isn't falling within that range? So if you're finding it's a little bit low, you can mix up a little bit stronger batch of nutrients and try to bring that EC level up if you want to. If you find that your EC level is too high, you definitely don't want it to be too high because having a high EC level is, you know, a lot worse than a lower EC level because you can burn those roots and cause tip burn on the leaves and probably a very unhealthy plant. But as I said, I like to go low to start with anyway with all my seedlings. So I think once the tomato plant's more established and has adjusted to being in this nutrient water, I will do some more EC testing in a week or so and maybe bump up that EC level a little bit more. So again, we do the pH test after we have our EC level adjusted. So as expected, my pH is a little bit high on this as well, coming in at about 6.99. So I want to try and bring that down below that 6.5 level. So I usually go with about a 5 mil dose to start with to see how that adjusts that pH for me. Again, give it a good stir, let it sit for a few minutes. It looks like now that pH is dropping nicely and heading down into the low sixes. Again, you usually have to leave it for about 30 seconds or so. So it looks like it's going to sit around that 6.1, which is good. And we are ready to set this tomato up in its permanent home. So these super long roots are going to get at that nutrient water right away. And this tomato plant is really going to take off. Okay, so I got everything moved into my grow tent here. And I forgot to just mention what types of cucumbers I have going here. So these are a couple varieties that I purchased from West Coast Seeds, and they are the Mini-Me and Socrates. So both of these cucumbers are a parthenocarpic variety, which means that they only produce female flowers, which means they don't require pollination. So they are great varieties to grow indoors in the hydroponic method. So I moved my Sun Gold Cherry back into the grow tent here. As you can see, it is really taking off it's at that early blooming stage so i have a string system here where i have it tied to the to the bar at the top of my grow tan so i've got a tomato clip here and then another clip like this so i just can adjust the string if i need to shorten it or lengthen it and then just clamp it to this here and then that kind of helps keep the plant stable and growing straight up instead of falling over so this is a indeterminate variety, which is not really the best type to be growing indoors, but I really like the, the sun gold cherry and I grew it in my grow tent last year. It does get very bushy, but you just have to do a lot of pruning and cut away a lot of those uh, stems and extra suckers that it does tend to shoot out and just keep it very controlled and try to just keep everything growing off this main stem here. So usually every week or so I come in and do an EC test and pH on my plants to make sure that the EC level is where it should be. The pH is uh, staying steady so that we know that this plant is getting everything it needs and is able to absorb all those nutrients. Right now I'm getting a EC reading of 3738 or 3.7. So that is falling in the higher range of that two to four uh, EC that we want to have. So I'm happy with that. We want to make sure that this tomato is able to absorb those nutrients that it needs. So we want to make sure the pH is at that optimal level of between 5.5 and 6.5. So my pH is stabilizing at around 6.4. So that's good. 
So because we have that EC level where we want it and the pH level is in that range, the sun gold cherry should be able to absorb those nutrients properly, keep growing, and we should start to see some little tomatoes on here pretty soon. So I hope you found this video helpful and you have a better understanding of how to measure your EC and pH and why it's important with your hydroponic plants. And don't forget to subscribe to my little garden newsletter. Be the first to hear about my online course coming soon and leave me a comment. Let me know you subscribed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.